we're going to talk about myths in the hat industry. Um, there are all these kind of, you know, myths and things that people have been talking about. One of the, I'm going to get right to them, one of these things that a lot of old timers come into my shop and, and they always say this. It's one of these things I've been hearing for 24 years working at this shop and I hear it all the time and I kind of have to just like kind of let them say it even though I know what they're going to say. Yeah. Like an old timer will come up to me and you know, like a really cool old guy. They're usually pretty, you know, like they're retired so their whole day is like, you know, get a coffee and a donut, get the newspaper, sit and read the newspaper and maybe go to the hat store, see Kevin, or maybe on Tuesdays they do that. Wednesday they go to the bagel shop and they see Sammy or whatever. You know, it's like their routine. So, like if I brush them away quickly, it's kind of like their whole day is shot. So, we get a lot of guys who come to the hat shop. I don't know, it's like uh, memories and stuff. They remember stuff about the old days and their dad's hats. and You know, and they know a lot about hats from the old days and they want to chat about it with me. And, you know, sometimes it's just they really enjoy it. And I don't have a lot of time to talk to, like, non-customers and stuff. But, you know, sometimes I do because uh, the guys, uh, I guess it means a lot to them sometimes, you know. And I don't want to, like, ruin their whole day if their whole day is scheduled around seeing Kevin and talking about hats. So anyway, this is what they do. They say, you know who ruined hats? And I'm thinking in my mind, Kennedy. Craig was going to say Kennedy. Kennedy! Yeah. So there was this thing. Kennedy was, like, the first president who wasn't um, inaugurated wearing a top hat. They all used to wear these top hats, you know, and these like tuxedo kind of things and this thing called an opera hat, which is a silk, silk collapsible opera hat. You've seen them. They're the very sort of, you know, like the ones that the mayor wears on Thomas, uh, Thomas the Train, you know, that mayor character. They wear these top hats when they get inaugurated. All, they all did. Uh, Hoover and everybody and all those uh, those hat guys. Wait, excuse me for one second. I want to get my list of my ten hat myths, which is standing right here behind the counter. All right, I'm lying. I want to wipe my nose. All right. See, I don't like to edit. Editing kind of sucks. All right, I didn't get my list. My list here is on the floor. I'm wiping my nose. All right. Kennedy was like the first president who didn't wear his hat at the inauguration. Now, I heard this from a pretty reliable source. There was a guy named John Garside who worked at JJ Hat Center back before I was there. I heard it from my boss, uh, my old boss, uh, who was one of the J's in JJ before the, old on the owner now, uh, my, the prior owner. He said that John Garside was in charge of uh, getting the top hat for Kennedy's inauguration. They had actually gone to him or this shop um, he was in charge of getting it, and he was a size 8. Uh, a lot of you know, big Irish heads in Ireland. Uh, Irish caps run very big, if you don't know about that. They run almost a whole size big. It's just a thing. Um, a lot of folks from that part of the world have very big heads. Kennedy, if you look at pictures of President Kennedy, his head was shaped sort of like that. It was very, very big on the top, almost sort of anvil shaped. You know, I'm not, you know, making fun. It just was. It was very, very big on top. And from what I heard, that Garside actually provided a top hat for Kennedy, but it didn't fit. Even the biggest one was not going to fit on Kennedy's head. So Kennedy didn't wear it. Um, he held it. I think he might have tried wearing it or something, but he didn't wear it at all. I haven't even seen the photos. I don't know the deal, but I know what I've been told from pretty... You know, reliable older folks who, you know, I mean, this isn't that long ago, the mid 60s and stuff, you know. So, anyway, um, Kennedy was also one of the first presidents that was young, good looking. He was a handsome guy. He had good hair. I mean, let's face it, he had hair, full head of hair. He was good looking, you know, with Marilyn Monroe and all that stuff. Jackie O, she was pretty. He was a handsome president and he had a lot of good hair and stuff. And this was the day where hair was in. Um, the Beatles were coming into fashion. The, the, the long hair look, the dry look, you know, people didn't grease their hair anymore. It was called the dry look. You know, they used like uh, hair dryers and, you know, products that women use. Like, you know, they went to the hair stylist. You know, these hip guys from Europe would cut their hair and stuff. Like, 
I think the Beatles were really responsible for long hair being like a mainstream kind of a hip thing. And President Kennedy was not a starchy, uh, business-like looking president, you know. He wasn't from the establishment or whatever they called him back in those old hippie or pre-hippie days. He was a people's president and he was young and he was, you know, he had hair, not long hair, but he had hair and he showed his hair and I think he had good hair and wanted to show it. So I don't think he wanted to show this image of being a hatted president. It was also a very conservative, kind of a starchy, you know, and he was a modern young president for for the people, for I guess for a new age. And he wasn't about to look like, um, you know, one of these Elliot Ness FBI type of guys with the fedora. He wanted to look, uh, I guess, just like a confident, uh, you know, young man. And that's how he looked, in my opinion. So Kennedy did not wear um, a top hat, not because he wanted to ruin hats or because you know he was driving it out of fashion. He didn't wear his top hat because he was too small, and most likely he just didn't like the way it looked. I'm sure you know, uh, you know, they didn't have to wear it. This is uh, you know, it's the '60s, right? Okay, what's another myth? Okay, here's a really here's a good technical myth. Fur felt hats are going to do better in the rain than a wool felt hat. Now everybody says that. Um, fur felt hats are more waterproof. Wool felt hats are less waterproof or this and that. Um, there is some truth to this. Most fur felt hats are more expensive. Most wool felt hats are a little bit cheaper and a lot of times they do it to keep the price down. Um, I have seen very, very, very expensive wool felt hats. Like, you know, if you go to Gucci or Donna Karen or one of these shops on Madison Avenue and they actually have a hat from, you know, Gucci or Versace, you know, and it costs like $1,800, they use like the cheapest felt for these designers. You know, it's like they know that the people don't know or they don't care. Anybody who's buying a hat from this place doesn't care about quality, so they make it the cheapest possible. It's like they don't even use fur felt. They don't even go for like, you know, a budget fur felt. They don't do a $200 Stetson quality, um, you know, when they're charging like 1500 bucks for this Gucci, whatever, Pucci fedora, you know, Versace, Armani, all of those kind of fedora that you will see in a sort of a Madison Avenue um, designer shop will generally be very, very, very expensive. I've seen a lot of girls come in with them, even guys, they come in with these, you know, sort of like a plain black wool felt hat. You know, it's cheap, it's soft, like the ones that flop down in your face. And then you look inside, there's like a plain black Gucci label or something. And they say, oh yes, I paid very, very lot of money for this, please, uh, can you fix? And the thing is like so soft that it's just like, you know, like really thin. You know like that thin felt that you used to use in, in um, kindergarten that was like craft felt? It, that's like wool felt. It's made out of that. It just falls, you know, there's no stiffener and it's just nothing and it's really cheap. And I've seen some of these hats from these big, big designers. Um, there are very, very expensive wool felt hats and they're really, I don't know, they're crap all um, fur felt hats. They're fur felt hats that are marketed as crushable and soft, luxurious, and very expensive. Um, they roll up, they could be from England, from Spain, from Italy, from wherever, but uh, they're sort of like Borsellino type or whatever from other brands, and what happens, they're just so thin, and they're so soft that any rain just makes them just sort of fall down, you know? They're not uh, laminated with any kind of like stiffener in there, and you need something, you know? So anything that's fur felt, yeah, you know, if you hold it, if you hold water in it, like a soup bowl, it's going to be waterproof, but that's not the main issue with hats. The main issue is not, are they going to hold water, is it going to be waterproof? Everybody always asks that, is this waterproof? It doesn't matter, okay? What matters is the next day, is your hat going to be out of shape and all floppy and just completely shrunken, out of shape, no body, no snap, and looks 
like crap? Or is it going to be okay? Is it going to look the same as like when I bought it when it was new? That's the difference. Now, when you go outside in a storm with your hat, you don't worry about it's going to leak water. None of these hats really do that. Um, what you worry about is the next day when you wake up, is this hat going to be okay? Or is it going to be just like completely just ruined and messed up just like this old rag that, you know, okay, I spent $300 on this expensive hat. Now it looks like an old bum's hat um, a day later. So you spend $300 on a POS. If anybody doesn't know what a POS, I'm not going to use curse words because I don't like curse words on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of kids who watch these things and I think as soon as you start cursing, then you gotta like ban the program and they can't watch it, you know? So I got like a six year old who likes to watch YouTube. And so, you know, whenever he gets a curse on one of his programs, I have to like say, okay, this is not for you, you know? So there's gonna be no cursing here, okay? We may go around the curse word or something. I might even say like, but or something, all right? All right, anyway. Fur felt hats are not going to always do better. Most of the time, the thing is, fur felt hats are more concerned with luxury, softness, looks, finishing. And then what happens when you get them out in the rain, they just do caca. They do, you know. What you want to look for with fur felt is thick felt. Thick is good. Um, huh. You want to look for a good snap. A hat should snap. If it's a snap brim fedora, if there's already a problem with the snap, like let's say it won't stay down, that's a problem. Most likely the hat was either just made wrong, made badly, or it's crap felt. Oh, I cursed. Okay, it's crapola felt. And um, what happened is as soon as he hit the steamer on the hat, it went, and now it doesn't, now it doesn't snap. The steam alone, just the mist ruined it. And, you know, these hats are everywhere. They're, they're expensive. They're, you know, 100 200 300 400 They're all different prices. Even $500 hats, I drop my pick. I always drop it. It's like a, I don't know what it is. It's a tradition here. All right. What you're looking for is a felt hat that will do good in the rain. Generally, a thick, thick hat will do very, very well in the rain. A stiff hat will do well in the rain. So if you see fur felt and it's nice and hardy and thick, and snaps, it's a good hat. You see thin hat with a raw edge, okay, it's a beautiful hat, it's crushable, but it probably might not survive the rain. Now it will if it's great felt, if it's really good felt, if it's like beaver or something like that, if it's a very good, reputable company, um, you know the names, there are good companies, most likely it'll do well, but like I've said before, Sometimes a thin felt with a raw edge, thin felt with a big brim, all three factors together, raw edge, thin felt, and big brim, all three of those together will equal disaster. You'll have a hat that's great, but is not a good rain hat. So use your thick hats for uh, the rain, use your stiff hats for the rain, westerns, things that are like outbacks, thicker felts that are hardy, you know, stuff that's got some snap to it, um, welted edges, bound edges, things like that. Use good hats in the rain. Um, if you have a good light felt hat, which is not expensive, it's wool felt, it's probably great in the rain. If you have a western hat, anything western, it'll be fine. Now, if you go down south, you go in Texas, Mexico, you see western hats that cost like $30, you know? but they're stiff, they're hard like boards, and they do fantastic in the rain. Even the straw ones, they have stuff called palm, palm leaf straw, which does fantastic. I, you know, I haven't played in a while, it's just... It's gotta play it once in a while. All right, myth number three. Let's say better or more expensive hats will do better in the rain. This is very related to it. Now, a better hat or a more expensive hat, no, no, no. It doesn't always do better in the rain. Um, a thick hat, I, I guess two and three were really the same. Okay. If the hat is expensive, don't think it's going to do very good in the rain. 
It could be a luxurious hat. It could be a light hat, a crushable hat. Crushable hats don't always equal great rain hats because they're soft, they're not stiff, and they don't always keep their shape in torrential downpours. Things that are stiffer are usually not crushable, but they do fantastic in the rain usually. So things that will do better in the rain, again, things that are laminated with lots of stiffener, very good, good felts. Um, I'm not talking about expensive felts. You can get uh, an expensive hat one year with great felt and the same model the next year is not that great. It depends, you know. Um, people have felt sources. They source felt from different places. It's not always great. And sometimes it's amazing. But um, just like a guitar, you know, there's a 1959 uh, Les Paul. That's like the most expensive guitar there is. Some of them are dogs, but some of them are magic, you know. And just because it's a $100,000 guitar doesn't mean it's better than, like, you know, this guitar, which might be, you know, way, way cheaper. Depends on the craftsman, the piece of wood. Um, you know, there's different wood. There's woods that are sort of um, dried incorrectly. <laughs> another myth. Keeping a hat stretcher inside your hat, like one of those hat jacks, keeping a hat, keeping that inside like a, like a shoe tree will keep your hat from stretching. Mm, that's a myth. Okay, a lot of people have these hat jacks. Hat jacks are the stretchers, the wooden ones. It's like a horseshoe and a horseshoe made out of wood and a crank in the middle and it's just like a... Think of a opposite vice. A vice, you crank it, it goes like this. It just cranks open, open, open. It cranks your hat open. What a lot of people do is they have hats that shrink a lot. And the reason why they shrink is because their apartments are hot. The heat from the radiator, see that radiator over there? It, it the heat, it makes the, the walls, everything dry. And then your leather band inside dries out a little bit every year, a millimeter, a millimeter, more, more, more. Eventually your hats are so tight that you got a red line on your head. And you're thinking, ah, oh, that's me, yeah, my hats are all tight. And I got the red line on my head. Well, here's the deal. It's from the heat in your house. So, what you gotta do is keep the hats away from heat, A. B, have them stretched by me, somebody who really knows what you're doing, or get the leather bands just taken out, put in some ribbon bands or new leather bands, have them blocked a little bigger. Never buy your hats on the small side. Buy them on the big side. I buy them big, and then I tighten them up. I put little pads inside. Uh, I've talked about those and stuff. Um, a hat jack inside will not keep it from, from, sh from shrinking. What happens is the second you take the hat jack out, it just contracts. Um, it might stay stretched for a little while, maybe like a half an hour or something, I don't know, 15 minutes, a half an hour, an hour or something, but then it will come back. There's, there's pressure in there. Um, the hat jack will, uh, it's, it's not going to help by keeping it like a shoe tree type of effect. What you need to do is stretch the hat, follow the directions on the hat jack. It says to steam it back here. What that does is it, it makes the little seam more elastic. Now, if your, your leather is really dry, steam can actually burn it and shrink it more. But we're assuming your leather is not that dry. Okay. It's not like flaking off in your hands and stuff. So hit it with steam. Put the hat jack in. Crank it. Crank it. Crank it. Crank it. Crank it. Crank it. So it's totally stretched out to the hilt. Leave it in there until the thing is dry. Um, it may feel dry in 10 minutes, but it's not completely dry. Let it dry completely. Give it an hour. Give it two hours, whatever, three hours. Give it all day if you want. Let it dry completely. Then take the hat jack out. Once it's out, it's not going to move much, but it'll move back. It'll move, okay, you just stretch the thing 50%. It'll come back 30 or 40 or something. Maybe, uh, It'll come back a lot, but you'll still get your stretch. You'll still wind up with a 10% stretch. 
So the idea is you stretch it to the hilt and you just over, 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 over stretch till the thing feels big. If you stretch it till it feels just right and the customer's like, oh, that's perfect. Well, like, as soon as you take it off the hat jack, by the time he gets out the door, he's gonna have the red line. The thing shrinks back quickly. So the second you take it off the hat jack, it's shrinking. So that's an old trick. We shrink, we, we stretch it, we stretch it. You know, people sell shoes like this too. It's like a salesman trick, you stretch it, stretch it, and you take it right off the stretcher, you give it to them. And they say, wow, these, these shoes feel great, I'll take them. They put them in the box, they let it contract. So, all right, keeping a hat jack inside is not gonna help it. What you gotta do is stretch it with the hat jack, over stretch it, wait till it cools, take it out. Then if you wanna put it in after, like as a shoe tree thing, that's fine if it makes you feel better. Um, you think it's not gonna like contract any past that hat jack is what you're thinking, but it will, it will. The second you take that out, it'll just go past it, you know. Anyway, so that doesn't work. Don't do it. Okay, I'm not scolding you guys. I'm trying to help you. All right, soft hats are not better. This is a myth. Soft hats feel better. Soft hats will fit better. Well, not always. Um, some people need hard hats, actually. Um, I do get um, sometimes Asian customers from Koreatown will try on a hat that's very oval shaped. And generally Asian heads are a bit more round and it, if something goes on with the brim like this, it sort of does a weird because the hat is too soft. So in certain cases, a harder hat will respond better to some people. Um, but soft hats fit better. You know, like if I need more depth, the soft hat will give me more depth. A hard hat will be just a, uh, and it'll sit high. It won't go down, it's like a, a wall. So soft gives you flexibility, allows you to, to roll the hat, makes it feel better, it fits better, it, sometimes it stays on better, um, it's flexible, it'll resist wrinkles and, and you know, getting screwed up because of its softness and flexibility. It'll just feel amazing, look amazing, but that does not mean it's gonna do better in the rain. It really means it, uh, it might be more susceptible to like getting out of shape, but, If you could find a hat that's soft, luxurious, rollable, and does great in the rain and stays really nice, that's the trick. There are very few and far between. There's, you know, expensive kind of boutique hats and stuff that do this. Older hats do this. Um, so it's a rare combination. Don't feel like, you, you know, you're going to get both of those things all the time. Okay, there are more myths, okay. A derby and a bowler. They're two different things, right? No, they're the same thing. Uh, Americans say derby. British say bowler. They say, have you got a bowler? And we say, yeah, I got a derby. Uh, he's running in a derby, the derby. You know, it's more like a New York, yeah, the brown derby, uh, the derby. It's a New york -y kind of American. Derby and a bowler, sometimes if the hat is made in England, like a Christie's bowler, you say bowler. If it's made in USA, like a wool felt derby, you might say, yeah, but they're essentially the same. Um, if it's got a crease down the top, it's a Hamburg. Generally a little bit bigger brim. Sometimes derbies are too small for bigger faces, so there's one with a bigger brim and they crease the top. That's a Hamburg. It's related to the derby. Um, what about the trilby? Trilby is a short brim. Fedora is a big brim. Is that true? That is a myth. It is and it isn't. The word trilby has dual sort of meanings. The British people, they call a short brim hat or basically any of these sort of dress hats, these are trilbies. It's like, uh, oh yeah, he was wearing a nice trilby. We, we say fedora now. Fedora is something that came into popular, I don't know, uh, culture, like, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. We, we never used to say fedora a lot. You used to say it like when you were talking about a big rimmed fedora hat, you know, like a man entered the room with a with a fedora hat and a, you know, it was kind of a, a big brim dress hat. Um, nowadays, the, the trilby has two meanings. It, to the Brits, it means a small brim dress hat, or it also means just any of these kind of dress hats, these fedora things. But it's also a particular type of a hat. It's a type of a shape that actually it doesn't snap. This is a snap brim fedora or a snap brim dress hat or whatever. 
A trilby is a little different. Um, I've seen really traditional ones. They have an A-shaped crown. So in other words, it comes to a point. So this is a, basically a squarish crown. Well, it's got a little point, but they have a very AA-shaped crown like this, okay? And then the back goes up, the front goes down, but it sort of blends from up to down with that really, really tapered A-shaped crown and this kind of a Robin Hoodie scoop thing in the back. So it's a, a low crown, a low crown. It's an interesting brim that does not snap up in the front. It only goes down. You see some of these things. And the back has a kind of a scoopy thing, almost like a Robin Hood head, like a very intense curl. That's a trilby. And also a very, very A-shaped crown. They're almost unique. They have a bit of a Robin Hoody kind of a look, very low. That's a true trilby. You know, it's kind of a, uh, you know, like this is a bowler, this is a Homburg, this is a Fedora, this is a trilby. It's the name of a particular type shaped hat. You know, that's what we call trilby, where the Brits say something else. Fedora, trilby, I don't know. I don't really like any of those terms. I just say dress hat. I feel funny saying those words. Nine, hats make your hair fall out. Um, okay, that's a weird one. Or, or they stunt your hair growth. They say that, you know, wearing hats for a long time that your scalp doesn't breathe. Um, that is probably true. Now, if you're wearing lots and lots of hats, you know, with like a satin lining, and you know, it's just like a filthy old hat, it's not good for your scalp, but I don't think it's gonna make your hair fall out. I think that's purely genetics. Um, that's been all predetermined before you were born, if your hair is gonna fall out or turn gray or when it's gonna happen. This stuff is nothing to do with hats, but it can screw up your scalp, you know, it can give you like, you know, itchy scalp where you get the flakes and, you know, all sorts of things going on like, uh, I don't know, creepy crawlies, uh, I'm getting itchy thinking about it. You get those um, bad scalp, you yeah? know? Okay, but it does not make your hair fall out sooner. Uh, wearing a hat actually is, is good for those guys. If you got the receding hairline and stuff, you wear it when your hair is like, you know, kind of receding, you know, like when you're that like 35 year old receding hair, you start wearing your hat. People just know you as that cool hat dude. And then like, when you're in your 50s, you're 45 and your hair is just like one of those little tiny Costanza things over the head, you know, like Super Mario has, just like these little rings and you're left with just that. Nobody even knows you're bald because you always wore a hat when you were young, too. You just keep wearing it, you know? So, nah, it doesn't make your hair fall. That is a myth. Um, here's another myth. Um, that thing, like, is there a hat to suit my face? There is not a hat to suit your face. I've talked about this a lot. Um, basically, there's a lot of hats to suit your face. Now, you may think I'm not a hat person, I don't think so. But there, yeah, you just haven't seen a big selection, or the right selection, where you haven't given yourself a chance. A lot of it is you have to want it, you have to like it. Um, some of it is mental. I've seen people go in there, they try it on, they feel real embarrassed, and then after 10, 15 minutes of people saying, you look good, they start standing tall, and, hey, you know what, I like this, you know, and they dipping it and doing all this cool stuff, you know. Um, there is not one hat to suit your face. There's like a whole bracket of hats. Um, I might look at this guy. I'm looking at my face on the monitor right now and say, okay, this guy's got this big frizzy hair and he's, you know, kind of skinny, he's not that tall, but, you know, he's a little medium, he's dark hair, blue eyes. Okay, I would try something a little bit funky on him, maybe a nice color, like, you know, something light, you know, maybe a brim up little bigger brim, two and three. Um, I think that there's a bracket of hats for this guy. Now this hat right here I'm wearing is a small brim. It's like two and a quarter, or two inch brim. I'm gonna say that's as small as I want that guy to go. Uh, a bigger brim is definitely gonna be more effective for me because of all the hair sticking out. It's gonna give me a little bit of a cool, dramatic kind of a rock look, like, I don't know, Bob Dylan or whatever, you know, one of those big sort of Americana rootsy hats with the long hair guys, you know. I would do something a little bigger on this guy. 
Now I can go with a big three inch brim, something a little bit Western with some kind of feather. I could go a little bit smaller, a two and a half inch brim, like that green hat I wear, a fedora with the brim up, dress hat. Or I could do a three inch brim, like a really big brim. I could go with the brim down and do sort of a, you know, more of a big wizardy look or something. There's all sorts of looks that this guy can do, but there's, there are limits. Um, when I look at Kevin's face, I say two inches as small as he should go. So don't do like, eh, don't do the two, don't do the one and three quarters, don't do one and three eighths, don't do one and a half, and don't do huge, huge, huge either. Um, I'm also not a tall guy, I'm pretty skinny, my arms are tiny, my legs are kind of chicken bony, and um, yeah, I can't wear a huge hat either. Um, right now I'm doing a three and three quarter inch brim is my latest hat I bought called the Tri-City. That's as big as I ever, ever go. And I think I could do it sometimes. Like I'll do it at the hat shop or if I'm, I don't know, I'm doing a video or playing music, like a stage kind of thing or something. But I'm not going to wear it all the time. It's really big, a three and three quarter inch brim. And it's heavy and it like bumps into doorways and stuff. I, you know, really, when I'm like trimming the window, it bangs into the window and, and trees. And, you know, it's just too big. So I really like my green hat, which is like two and a half inch, two and three eighths, you know, and that feels very comfortable on me, but two and a half to three is my ultimate favorite brim size. And you're gonna find you have a bracket too. You might be two uh, to, hmm, let me think, hey, I just helped a really nice guy named Craig this week. He was wearing a lot of Western hats, open roads and things, and he wanted something different. So we tried a few different brims, all different things, and I knew he's from out of town. He wanted to try a whole bunch of stuff. So we tried everything, you know, just everything from short to medium to big to huge, light, dark, big, tall, small, low crowns, flat crown. We tried everything, caps. And then um, eventually he figured out what he liked. Um, he got a new hat that was almost exactly like the green hat I always wear, a two and a half inch fedora with a pinch front. And now he's saying it's like his new thing. He loves it. He's saying he's sleeping with it, or he's everything but sleeping in it. And he's totally ready to get another one. Um, I think there is not a hat to suit your face. This is a myth. People feel like, yeah, you know, a little insecure about themselves. This is a, a phenomenon, I, phenomenon I've seen at the shop. Everybody is very, very critical of themselves but the hat looks great on the next guy. I'm like that too. Everybody says, oh, you look so cool in that hat, Kevin. And I'm thinking, I really look like an idiot. I'm, I'm so ugly. You know, I wish I looked as cool as that girl in this hat. You know, she looks so cool, you know? Um, and she's thinking, oh God, I feel like a fool in this hat. I, I wish I was like that cool guy who worked here, you know, in that hat. I mean, everybody's like that. We're all very insecure about ourselves and we're so quick to put ourselves down. Like, yeah, I got a fat head. I got a big head. Everybody says that, especially girls. They all come in and they say, oh, they're really nervous and they say, um, I've got a really big head. And like 90% of them have just like regular heads or small, like undersized heads and mediums. Like very few of them have big heads. You know, every once in a while I get one that actually has a big head. But what that is, is a person goes to like a shop, they have seven hats there, they try two of them on, they're too small, oh, they give up. They're just too insecure to follow through. People are watching. They think they look like an idiot. Um, I better stop before somebody sees me. So most people think they have big heads, fat heads. They're ugly. They're not hat persons. And they look like an idiot in a hat. They're not a hat person. But this is human nature. Um, I kind of feel the same way. You know, When I try on hats, I feel like they just look stupid on me. And like, I'm not one of those real dudes who wears hats. You know, he dresses up, he's got a suit on, he looks really cool with a great haircut. I feel like I just throw it on, my sloppy hair, and I feel like an idiot in my hats. But you know, people tell me I look great. Everybody's insecure about themselves, and they're, you know, I guess I'm getting off on a weird tangent now. But the truth is this, um, you look great in your stuff, man. Just keep wearing it, and just keep enjoying it, and find the right one. It's all about finding the right hat, and you don't need a yes man salesman, you need somebody to tell you, yeah, that one looks like a crapola, and that one looks pretty good, and that one, yo, your eyes are popping in that one, you look really good in that one, yo, you're gonna get a lot of compliments. 
you need somebody to lay it on you really like true so bring a friend bring your girl bring your guy bring your lover your partner your best friend or bring somebody you trust with you and just try them on don't be afraid to bug the sales and try lots of stuff all different types of hats and then if you find out there is not a hat for you that's good but you know what I haven't seen that yet there is always a hat for everybody so happy holidays and Thank <laughs> you.